got to say that was probably one of those games for the ages. Uh, I don't know how many uh, games look like they probably will not go your way and you just find a way. Credit to these guys to my right and a lot of others that were in that dugout. Uh, James Madison is a heck of a team. Uh, I want to compliment them. That's a really good offense. They provide a lot of trouble, a lot of, a lot of problems for a defense and for a pitching staff. And so i uh, been on that side of it, been on this side of it. Uh, it's not an easy thing to accept if you're James Madison, but I thought they played their ass off all day. Um, and I'm just glad we found a way, some way, somehow to come out on top at the end. Cole, were you surprised that they pitched to you in the ninth after they'd intentionally walked you twice? No, sir, not really. I felt like, you know, I just had to stay in the moment, like be ready to hit no matter what. Like, I don't, I can't, I'm not like a fortune teller. I can't pick and choose when they walk me. Or, so I just had to stay locked in and stay focused and took good swing. For either Chris or Will, what does it mean to have a guy like Cole that always seems to be able to come up in the clutch when you guys need him to? I mean, he's a dog for us. Um, you know, he's our heart and soul of this team. And, you know, when he's not going well, he's still there with us. And, uh, you know, recently he's been going well. And, uh, you know, he's been the heart, heart and soul of this team. And it's, it's just amazing to see him play. Yeah, I agree to that. Um, I would say that, I mean, they're walking him three times a game. And then they finally pitch to him. And he goes off, you know, and it's just a testament to what he does. Will, you've had some uh, some struggles at the plate this year, but how good does it feel to be kind of in a groove right now to where you, you know, hit a home run in Hoover and then you come here, hit a home run to ignite the offense and then be able to get the, uh, the big sack fly to win the game? Yeah, I mean, it feels good, um, you know, just trying to do anything to win. Um, you know, I'm not – Cole Messini, you know, he goes up there and seems like he's hitting a home run every at bat. But, you know, I'm just trying to do my best to help the team win. Chris, it might have got lost there without Moose's homer, where you kept kept your team in it for a long time today. How do you kind of feel about your outing today? And how do you feel physically after 73 pitches? Uh, I thought it was an okay outing. Um, four, was it 4.2, 73 pitches? You know, I had gave up some, like, duck hits. But other than that, I thought it threw well, I would say. But keeping us in the game, just slowly, slowly, like we were creeping back, and then you finally struck with a homer, and then just simple sack fly to win the game. I mean, that's testament to our team, I would say. Just fighting until the end. Well, on that 2-0 pitch and kind of coming into that bat, what were you looking for at the plate? I mean, I was looking for a, a fastball. He had a good fastball, and, uh, you know, it was at the top of the zone, and, you know, I just wanted to get in the air and, give a chance, you know, for Brewer to score. Uh, Will, going off of that, uh, were there different plays in mind for, for you, whether it was Bunt or, or anything like that, based on the defensive look? Uh, they just, you know, told me to get my hacks off. Um, you know, they, they wanted me to wanted me to have it bad and uh, take my take my swings, you know, and I did. And, and Chris, um, the trainer went out there for to see you for a second, I think, right? You, everything okay with you? Yeah, everything's good. Feel good. Wait, wait, sorry. I'm back here. Cole, you were up here with Eli the other day talking about how important it is that no matter how big the spotlight is, you guys stay together. And how important was that today when you guys were down, headed into late innings? How important was it for you guys to stay together then? I mean, I, th I think it's just as important as when we're winning, too. I think at the end of the day, like, we're at our best when everyone's playing together. Everyone's pulling for each other. Everyone's got each other's backs. Everyone's picking each other up. I feel like, you know, when we get beat, we have some guys over here, some over here. So I think it's it was really good to see us stay together throughout the entire nine innings today and not lose focus there in the ninth and came out with a win. Will and Cole, I wanted to ask a little bit about Donovan Burke's pickoff. And we noticed up in the press box, you guys were planting your foot on that first, your feet on that first base. I was just curious, how quickly did you guys start recognizing, like, okay, there's not going to be much of a, not really going to be much space of, much room for error that you guys can work with? I mean, we knew it was good. I mean, the number says he has, what, 10 on the year. And I was obviously the first pickoff of the day, but. Um, it was it was actually like the best move I've ever seen. Props to that kid, and hopefully, 
we don't if we play them again, we're just going to keep our foot on the bag because it was really good. Mark, a couple for you. First of all, Ethan Petri seemed to be kind of uncomfortable. Is he okay? Yeah, he got hit over the pinky, uh, so he should be fine. Again, I, I feel like all year I've told you guys somebody would be fine, and the next day we wake up and there's something on the injury report that I wasn't expecting to see, um, but all indications are that he'll be fine. And looking at the ninth, were you surprised that they pitched to Cole considering they had intentionally walked him? Twice? You know, that's a really hard decision for a manager and a pitching coach to make there because if you put him on and you're putting the winning run at the plate and that, that would be a, a bitter pill to swallow too. Home runs are unlikely. You know, even Cole Messina, he has, I don't know how many at-bats he has this year. He's got 21 homers. So like there's a 10% chance he's going to hit a home run there. Uh, so... You know, sometimes managers play the odds, but then also sometimes the guy's just so hot, you, you have to be careful too. And we've had that with Condon and Caglione this year. There's a lot of there's a lot of variables to go into it. Um, and you don't have a crystal ball. The guy makes a pitch in a different spot and he might ground out or pop up. Um, I'm just glad right now Cole Messina is so locked in. Hey, Mark, kind of the same question I asked for Chris and Will. Uh, with, with Cole, I mean, how, how big is it to see – my question, I guess, is like, you know, what have you seen from him as the leader on this team and how he's been able to kind of step up in the clutch? Well, he's been arguably one of the best players in the country for the last month. And what I don't want to be lost today is he threw three guys out at second base, too, which was incredible for the momentum shift of that game. Because if those guys are safe and they, they get another hit and they extend their lead, like it's, it's just we were never able to quite catch up. And so him keeping the game at bay, Chris Veach did a great job on the mound and Cole did a great job of, of controlling their running game just a little bit uh, to give us some outs there, to give us a chance. And, and uh, as I said, he's, he's one of the best players in the country. He's our heart and soul. We've all, we all say that about him and it's the absolute truth. Mark, I kind of want to piggyback on that too. I mean, we're going to talk a lot about Cole's bat and rightfully so, but those three, you know, instances where he threw out runners on a team that, is really aggressive yeah. on the base pass. How confident are you when you see a scattering report or see a team like JMU that loves to run, that loves to steal bases, and it's part of their identity that you have that guy back there who's able to to make those type of plays? Yeah, they are, they they provide problems. There's no question about it. They, over 100 stolen bases, and you know Cole Cole's doing a great job throwing the ball to second base, uh, but the pitchers also have to give him a shot, and they did. And it's a combination of the pitcher doing his job, Cole doing his job, and you've just you've got to respect what they do because they they have a lot of power and they have a lot of speed. So again, they they present problems and uh, they gave us some problems today, but we just we just kept plugging until we found a way to win. We've touched on his skill, but talking about Cole Messina's heart and just his attitude towards the game, it feels like every time we're talking about something he did well, he's kind of shrugging it off and just putting his mind to the next thing. Just how much of an influence does he have on the rest of the team with the way he is able to handle success? Yeah, great question. His his leadership is very important to this group. You know, most great teams have great leadership in the clubhouse. Coaches set the tone and the structure, but the really good teams have leadership within that clubhouse where the coaches don't need to babysit. Uh, and you know the guys will hold each other accountable and that generally has a leader at the top there. He's our guy, he's the voice in there. Uh, he holds guys accountable and he, he also leads by example by being a great player and by doing whatever he can to compete at the highest level. So look, when you're a coach, you, you are very fortunate to have a guy like Cole Messina. He comes from a great family. Uh, they've kind of built that into him and he's evolved a great amount in South Carolina over the three years because he hasn't always been at this level. And so his improvement curve has been very, very impressive. Uh, with Chris today, was that a situation where just as long as the game was still even in striking distance, you knew you were going to use him today? And when would he be available again for, the, for again this weekend? Yeah, he threw 70 pitches, give or take. And if he was a guy that threw 98 miles an hour and, you know, and threw 73 pitches, you might say he's probably done for the week. Because he's such a change-up guy, it's it's not quite as much wear and tear on the arm. So I would imagine he'll be available not tomorrow, but maybe uh, 
a, another in another day, not for a big stint, but maybe for something if we really need it um, because of the type of pitcher he is. So uh, the plan was generally just like in the SEC tournament, once he was in there and you could tell he was in control of the game uh, as we were creeping back, we just wanted to put him out there so that, that we would have that chance at the end. You guys have played six straight real high pressure games going back to the SEC tournament. You had, had to overcome a lot of your own mistakes. Do you have any blood pressure medicine, <laughs> Phil, that I could borrow? I got some Maalox over there. Wow. You know. But uh, uh, you think you're going to eventually make it easy on yourself uh, in one of these games? I, I sure hope so. I would love to look up and, and you know, we play cleaner defense and we pitch at a, a very high level and we scored 15 runs. But you know what? If that's not what this team is, that's not what this team is. At the end of the day, it's about winning the ball game. And we've been doing that a lot lately. So look, it's not always pretty. Sometimes it's real pretty and, e and easy, and sometimes it's not. Um, and sometimes games like this are even more satisfying when it's not easy and you still don't give in and you have a team that sticks together through it. It's Sometimes it's even more satisfying. Coach Cole talked about this team sticking together. I felt like every time I looked over in that dugout, y'all were jumping up and down. Maybe not you, but uh, the, the team and the players were. Is someone in charge of keeping the energy up in the dugout? And why is it so sustainable through a game like that? Yeah, I wouldn't say anybody's in charge of it. We, we haven't assigned uh, a, an energy coach in there. Just the kids, we, we constantly are encouraging the guys, these guys to stick together, have fun. Like, have fun. This is the postseason. This is the NCAA. 80% of, of, of your peers right now are not playing anymore. So enjoy this, create lifetime memories. And I told them it's not going to be easy just because you're coming out of the SEC. This is not going to be easy. We're battle tested, which means we'll have a chance to win these games, but it won't be easy. So through the thick and thin, I'm just I'm very, very proud of these guys that they just they keep it up. Um, they support each other even after a tough inning. And and that somehow gives you a better chance to have a, a bounce back inning. They asked the nice questions over there, so I got to ask. Them oh, John, more come on, ones. John! <laughs> rain on the parade. Go ahead. Four four errors yeah. again today, and, and yeah. third base was an issue again. Do you reevaluate that, or are you just saying Talmadge is our guy? I think he's our go? guy right now. He's our guy. I thought he swung the bat much better today, and hopefully that confidence filters over. Uh, I saw him make a couple good plays late. You know, there was a one play that he made late that, uh, if he hadn't made that play, then you may say, man, he's just digging too big a hole right now, but. I just think for right now, if he's going to swing, start swinging the bat better, uh, I'm going to count on the fact that the defense will come along with it. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thank you.